Hey guys, welcome back, Shobham this side. Now let us start our new section in which we are going to start our journey with Django REST framework. Now consider this lecture as a theory lecture in which we are going to talk about lot of concept as well as configuration. And if you understand all these concepts in theory, it will be a lot easier for you in future to understand them while doing practical stuff. Just make sure, take your time, watch this lecture twice, but make sure you understand all the concepts that we are going to talk about, all the different concepts in this lecture. So the first thing is I strongly recommend if you need notes, if you need theory tutorial, just visit the official documentation official website of Django REST framework. Just search Django REST framework on Google and you will get official website on the top. Open this website and here you will have lot more information about the installation process and all the other thing. You don't have to worry much. I will be talking about each and every single point. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the installation process. So all you have to do is pip install Django REST framework. That's it. We'll be talking about all the other required thing later as we move forward. So at this point of time, the first thing I'm going to do is install Django REST framework. Jump onto my CMD and here I have activated my virtual environment and I am inside watchmate folder. So let me do pip install and then all I have to do is Django REST framework. That's it. So the installation process is done and here you can see uh, the minimum requirement to work with Django REST framework latest version is either Django 2.2 and we are using 3.2 so everything is working fine. Also make sure you are using Python which is greater than 3.5 and Django greater than 2.2. I'm using 3.9 and I'm using Django 3.2. I'm using alpha version. So it will be fine for you whichever the latest version that you have installed. Now the next thing you have to do is you need to add this REST framework into your installed app. So just copy this one, jump onto your folder that is your VS code. Uh, let me minimize this one and open the main directory of our project. Inside that I have settings.py, just scroll down a bit and here I have installed apps In let me add it here. Okay, that's it. So this is going to be our Django REST framework and that's it. So that's the minimum configuration required to start our journey with Django REST framework. And in future, I'm going to call it as DRF. It will be much easier for you instead of me repeating Django REST framework again and again. So this is the base requirement to start our journey. Now there are several concepts. Because of these concepts, we are going to utilize DRF. The first one is serialization and the second one is deserialization. So if you jump onto our code, if you jump onto our views.py, here you see I got a complex data, which is our query set. We converted that into our dictionary and then we sent a JSON response in return. So this complete process, we divided into two different part. Now, if I try to make you visualize the complete process, what we did is every time we make an entry, we are actually creating our object. So this is our sample database. We currently have three entries. That means we currently have three objects. So if I try to fetch anything, I'm going to fetch them in the form of our query set, which is our complex object, complex data type. And this is our current model object. Now converting this data type into our Python native data type, which is Python dictionary, this process is known as serialization. And then all we have to do is pass this dictionary in the form of JSON response. At this point of time, we are doing this complete task manually. We need to map each and every individual element, every individual value. It can be name, it can be our active. At this point of time, we are even using only two or three uh, fields. We currently have only three fields, but think about a big project. We might have 10 fields, 20 fields. So trying to do every single thing manually is going to take a lot of time. Now this was just one bit that is accessing our information, but we have to create, we have to update, we have to delete. 
So to avoid this, we have our simple process, which is mapping will be done by serialization. And then all we have to do is render this into JSON. That's the whole process. I know this sounds a bit complicated, but it's quite easy once we start working on it. So all you have to do is just understand this three process. Now, what is deserialization? Just the opposite of this. At currently, if we need to deliver information to a user, we are serializing. But what if we need to get information from user and store it in our database? During that part, we need to deserialize our data. So suppose we get information in the form of JSON, then we need to convert it into dictionary and then we need to deserialize it and store it in the form of object in our database. Let me move to next slide that will give you a base idea. So this was our step one in which we converted complex data to native data type and then into JSON. Now, if user need to submit any information to our website, our app, or maybe our desktop application, we are going to get information in the form of JSON, convert that information in proper Python native data type, and then convert that information using deserialization into complex data type, where we are storing this information into database. So this is the minimum part that you need to understand. I know there is a lot of theory behind it. There is a lot of things that we need to understand. And don't worry, I will attach a lot of information. But you just need to understand this process. Most of these students make mistake here. I hope this one is clear. Now let me get back. So I was talking about Django REST framework and the documentation part. So if you jump here and click on tutorial, everything that you need to understand is here. We need to talk about serialization, then how we are going to get requests as well as send response, then talk about class based views, about authentication and permission, and then about relationship as well as hyperlink API, and then view set and router. Now we have a proper API guide here with each and every concept, and we are going to utilize this a lot. Now, before moving into our actual coding part, I need to talk about three other things. That is what type of serializer we are going to use or what type of serialization we have and then what type of views we are writing. So currently, if you know, there is class based view as well as function based view. So there are two type of views that we can do and then how we can access our API. So either we are going to use any other software. Do we need to install any other type of software? or we can work with browser or do we need to use terminal? So there are three things that we need to focus here. The first thing is about serialization. So there are two types of serializer. There is no official documentation about this. I just created this and divided them into two parts. If you just click here onto serialization and if you scroll down a bit, you will see this one serializer dot serializer. This is the first type. And if I scroll down a bit again, you will realize that we also have model serializer, this serializer start model serializer. Now these two are pretty important, but no one is going to talk about them like this in theory part. So there are two types of serialization. The first one is serializer start serializer and then model serializer. Remember, this is not an official type by Django REST framework or any other organization. I just created it. So you remember these information. Now, what about views? How we are going to write these views? So again, I divided them into two type. The first one is class based view and the second one is function based view. Uh, if you jump onto this API guide, click on views, you will get both information class based view as well as the function based views. Now, what is the difference when we are working with class based view, we are going to utilize the API view class. So we are going to import this API view class and write all our views. Now, what is about this function based view? So when we are going to use this function based view, we are going to utilize this decorator. So if you see, we are going to add this decorator over our function. Now you don't need to remember this right now. You just need to understand what is the difference. So there are two type of serialization and there is two type of views. The next thing is how we are going to access our API. 
So with Django REST framework, we have pretty solid thing, which is known as browsable API. The second thing we can do is we can use Postman, which is a third party software. And if you're working in any professional project, if you're working with any company, chances are 95% of the time you are going to utilize this third party software Postman. The third thing is you can also utilize HTTP Pi. I don't recommend it. You then have to deal everything on your terminal or your CMD, but you can work with HTTP Pi and it's a valid option. So that's the three point about our serializer, about our views, as well as how to access API. Now to visualize and to learn them, this image is going to help you. The other thing is when to use which views or when to use which serializer, you will understand them during coding part. What we are going to do is, we are going to use this first serializer and then use our function based view and then class based view. Then we are going to do is, our second serializer that is our model serializer and then again use function based view and class based view. In this way you will understand everything. The other thing is we are going to utilize this browsable API as well as this postman. So you are going to understand every single thing. That's it. That's it for this theory lecture. I know this was a bit complicated, but the problem is no one talks about this at early stage and everyone start the tutorial from the very first lecture. They start talking about serialization, but then you get confused about different type of serializer. Then you get confused about different type of views. It's much easier to get a bit information about them and then later explore everything. I hope you got the idea. You don't need to learn everything. You just need to get the basic idea. From the next lecture, we are going to start our serialization process. Make sure you visualize this image again or maybe just take a screenshot, but make sure you have information about this. That's it. From the next lecture, let us start our journey. Thank you for following. I hope this lecture was helpful and I see you guys in the next one.